have an example application here for posting code snippets online. All you have to do is fill in a name, select a language, type in the code, and then post the snippet. So here's that code snippet that we created and currently there's no syntax highlighting for this. And that's what I wanna show you how to add in this episode. Now one of the easiest ways to add syntax highlighting is on the client side through JavaScript. This way your server doesn't have to mess with it. Check out the Rainbow Library for a way to do this. Another client side solution is the Syntax Highlighter project. Now both of these options are fairly limited in their language selection and also add more work for the browser to do. So you might want to offload that onto the server and that's what I'm going to be focusing on in this episode. So let's take a look at some server side solutions. CodeRay is probably one of the easiest to use in a Rails application because it's in pure Ruby, so it has no other dependencies. Also is very fast, so you often don't have to mess with caching. Its biggest downfall in my book though, is that it doesn't support a whole lot of languages. One of the most popular server-side solutions is Pigments. Now, this is what GitHub uses, and one of the greatest things about it is the many languages that it supports. It has just about every language out there. Now the downside as far as Rails is concerned is that it's in Python, so you have to have some kind of bridge to cross over to run it. Thankfully, the pigments.rb gem provides a wrapper around pigments so you can interact with it directly in Ruby, and is quite fast. Another option is Ultraviolet. Its greatest feature is the ability to use TextMate syntax files so you have access to just about every language out there, and those are easy to customize and make your own. Its biggest downfall, however, is that it's slow. All right, let's do some benchmarking so we can compare the speeds of each of these server-side options. I've already written up a benchmark script here which compares CodeRay, Pigments, and Ultraviolet. And it's going to run each one 50 times and syntax highlight the contents of this file. And this also serves as a nice example of a way to do syntax highlighting in each of these three options. Now to run this benchmark, I'll first need to install the gems which are CodeRay, Pigments.rb, and a UV. And now I can run that benchmark script. And it's going to run CodeRay and Pigments, and those were quite fast, and Ultraviolet took uh, several times longer. So as you can see, Pigments was about four times slower than CodeRay, and Ultraviolet was about 20 times slower. Now in general, I find I can usually do CodeRay in real time without any caching, and possibly the same thing with Pigments, but if you're doing a lot of syntax highlighting, it's probably a good idea to cache it anyway. Next, let's apply this to our Rails application and add some syntax highlighting to this code snippet. Now I'm going to use pigments here, but it's usually just a one line change to swap it out with the library of your choice. First, I'll go into the gem file for this application, and at the bottom, I'll add that pigments.rb gem, and of course, you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Next, I'll go into the show view template where I'm displaying that code snippet. Now currently, I'm just wrapping this in pre-tags, but I want to use pigments here. First, I'm going to remove these pre-tags because pigments will add them automatically for me. And then we could just pass this code string into a call to pigments.highlight. And then if you know the language that's being passed into here, you can pass that in, in a lexer option and just pass that snippet uh, language like that. So this will just use the language that the user submitted through the form. But if you don't have this information available, you could just leave this lexer option off here and it will smartly try to guess the language based off of the code contents. Or if you know the file name or MIME type, you can also pass those as options into here and it will smartly guess the language based off of that. Now one more change we need to make here is to add a call to the raw method because this will generate some HTML and we don't want Rails to auto escape that. So we wrap it in raw. Now let's try this out by reloading this page and it looks exactly the same. And that's because even though it is doing the markup, it's not colorizing it because I haven't added any CSS to do so. Now pigments RB comes with a CSS method to generate some styling. So we could just run that and copy the outputs into a CSS file and include it into our Rails app. Or we could take advantage of the asset pipeline. So inside of my style sheets directory, I'm going to make a new file in here called pigments.css.erb. Yes, you can add an ERB extension to an asset. And then in here, I'll just run the pigments.css call. And then reloading the page, and there we go. Like magic, we have our syntax highlighting. Now pigments comes with several different styles built in. If you run the pigments.styles method in the Rails console, you'll get an array list of the different styles available. So I can take any one of these and pass it in as a style option. So I'll use the colorful style. And reloading the page, 
And there we go, there's our different styling. So now we have some beautiful syntax highlighting working without much code at all. And we could even move this into a helper method to make it more convenient to highlight code elsewhere. Now what if your code snippet isn't just a simple attribute like this, but is embedded within a markdown document instead? For example, let's say I have an article model and I can create one with a name and some content. But let's say I want to add a code snippet directly in the middle of this content, just like I would on GitHub with Markdown uh, using uh, three backticks and a language and specifying some code into here. So how would I do this if I currently create an article? It's not going to format it correctly. All I have so far is a call to simple format to add the breaks in the article content properly. But first, let me switch to Markdown so we can add some code formatting in the middle. Going to the gem file of this application, I'm going to add the red carpet gem to do the markdown formatting like I show in episode 272. And then going back to my view template, instead of using simple format here, I want to use markdown instead. And I'm just going to move this all into a helper method called markdown, which I just pass the content to. So then I'll go into my application helper file and paste in the code necessary for defining this markdown method. Now what I'm doing here is a little bit differently than what I show in episode 272 since a red carpet has been updated significantly since then. But well, the first thing I'll do is make a new HTML render, passing in a couple options, and then I'll uh, render out that markdown using a few more options to enable and customize how the markdown behaves. And then finally I'll just call HTML safe on this so Rails doesn't try to do HTML scaping. Now let's try this out. I'll reload this page which used the simple formatting and now it's going to go through Markdown, so it's going to interpret that code block properly. Now it doesn't do syntax highlighting yet because it doesn't go through pigments. This is actually quite easy in Red Carpet too. All we have to do is define a new renderer class, and I'll just paste in the code for doing this. Here I'm making a new class called HTML with pigments, and it inherits from the Red Carpet HTML renderer, which we used before. And all we're doing is overriding the block code method in here, which takes a code snippet and a language, and using pigments to do the highlighting for this code. So that means I can use this new renderer instead of this one right here. And now when I reload the page, voila, there's our new syntax highlighted code with pigments. Now I want to finish up this episode by talking about caching. How might we cache this pigments highlight method if we needed to? Well, one option is to take a SHA of the code here and use that as the cache key so it auto expires. Let me show you what I mean here. First, I'll make a SHA of the code by calling digest SHA1 and calling hex digest on this and passing in that code. And then you can call rails.cache.fetch, passing in that SHA as a key and then a block. And then if that cache doesn't exist, if it's a miss, it'll execute the block and save that to the cache. Now it's a good idea to make this more unique, so I could pass in the word code in here and maybe uh, pass in the language and join all these together with a dash. So that way it's a unique key just for this. Now if you're also doing markdown like I am here, you'd probably want to move that cache so it's around this entire markdown method instead, but I wanted to focus on caching just the code highlighting part in this episode. Now caching is disabled by default in development mode, so you would need to enable that if you wanted to test this out in development. Um, but of course, its effectiveness will depend on whatever cache store you end up using here. Well, that's it for this episode on adding syntax highlighting to your Rails application. I hope you find it useful.